Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Nick Gray, and today I'm back with another smartphone camera test with the Realme GT2 Pro, which I'm using to record right now with its rear cameras. As I do in all of these smartphone camera tests, everything you see in this video is recorded on this device. So make sure you just keep an eye on the bottom of the screen to see which cameras from the device are being used for the photos and videos that you see. As far as the specs go, you have two 50 megapixel sensors on the back of the phone, a Sony IMX766 for the main camera, and this one here, the ultra wide camera, is a Samsung sensor that's 50 megapixels as well and then there's a micro camera on the back which we also saw on the Oppo Find X3 Pro last year which we'll take a look at as well uh, but as far as that ultra wide camera goes it's actually the first 150 degree field of view smartphone camera that we've ever seen so that's going to be interesting to test out and then there is also a 32 megapixel selfie camera up front that can record 1080p video while the rear cameras can record 4k video and that main sensor of course can record 8k video as well so without further ado let's jump into some photos and videos from this device to see how it performs in the real world let's take a look And this here is a look at video capture from the rear cameras on the back of the device, starting off with the main sensor, then switching over to the ultra wide camera.
Now, the only disappointing thing about the ultra-wide camera with its 150-degree field of view is that it cannot be used to capture video. Whenever you're capturing video, it does crop in on the sensor so that it gives you a tighter field of view. It really would be nice if you got those really ultra-wide shots, as you can see in the photos that we've shared. And this here is a look at video capture from the selfie camera on this device. As I mentioned before, it is a 32 megapixel sensor, though it can only capture video at 1080p, 30 FPS, which is pretty disappointing because there are a lot of devices on the market right now, especially in this class or this price segment that can capture 4K video at 30 or even 60 FPS. Not sure why Oppo and Realme have been limiting their selfie cameras as far as the resolution for video capture goes. Now even though the video capture is limited to just 1080p for the selfie camera on this device, the sensor itself is actually pretty good, handling dynamic range really well in situations like this though. It'll be interesting to see how it performs in low light situations as well. Capturing the lower resolution should technically give it an advantage in low light situations though on most other devices. If you really want that, you can just switch it in the settings and capture at 1080p versus 4K.
And this here's a look at video capture from the selfie camera on this device. Again, captured at 1080p, 30 FPS. Uh, even though it does look a little bit soft in many situations when you don't have a direct source of light, the overall video quality does look to be pretty good as long as you're not shooting in complete darkness. And that's going to do it for this initial camera test with this device. Let me know what you think of the results in the comments below and whether or not you want to see a couple camera comparisons with this device as well versus Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and also the Pixel 6. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.